So the brain is the most complicated device we've ever found in the universe. It weighs about three pounds and it contains everything that you are. And we know this because when there's even small changes to the brain, that changes who you are, your decision making, your ability to see the world, your ability to simulate possible futures and evaluate them. Uh, when we look at the structure of this, we find it's the most complicated thing we've ever seen. It's made up of tens of billions of little cells, um, uh, each of which as, is as complicated as a city, and each of which is connected to thousands of other cells, so that there are trillions of connections. So this is more complicated than the entire globe of the Earth and every interaction between people all at the same time. So that's what makes you up. Somehow all of this wet biochemical network is you. And that's the mystery of neuroscience that we're trying to figure out is what is that relationship. Uh, here's an example of how the brain is steered by information that it doesn't even know it's being steered by. Um, uh, there was an experiment done some years ago where men were asked to rate the attractiveness of women's faces and photographs on a scale from one to ten and it turns out men will always give higher ratings to women whose eyes are dilated. And the important part is that dilated eyes is a biological sign of sexual readiness in women. Um, the men who were in the study didn't know that, but their brains pick up on signals like that. So it turns out the amount of information we get consciously is only a thin strip of the information we're actually taking in from people's body language and expressions and the way they act and biological signals and signs they're giving off. So this is the kind of example where we can see how our behavior is steered by signals we don't even know we got. Um, it turns out that for us to, uh, to judge how valuable something is to us, it needs to be understood in context. So it's difficult to know how much um, three apples are worth to you um, unless you can compare it against alternative things that you might have at the same time. Um, so one example uh, that, that people in the real estate industry sometimes can use is called the decoy effect, which is if you're, if you're trying, if you're showing a client two different properties, uh, if the properties are very different, the client has a difficult time understanding which one he wants more. So the decoy effect is to introduce a third property into the equation that's sort of like one of the other two and then he'll buy the one that it's like. Um, and the reason this works is because it's hard to know how to value these two very different things but as soon as you show something else that's like this then the brain can make this comparison much more easily and then knows which one it wants. It turns out that uh, there are many parts of the brain that care a lot about interaction between people. So things like trust and integrity and reputation. And those circuits are used not only with other people but also with companies. So when we think about companies that we like to interact with, it's all about those issues. And so in a traditional economics textbook, it's suggested that a sale to a customer is just a one-time transaction, but it turns out it's not really like that in real life because um, brains care about how that transaction went and whether they like the company in the same way they would care about whether they like a person. And so that's why customers need to be treated like friends instead of like some sales issue because the important part about maintaining a customer base is to make sure that they are happy just like they're in your circle of friends. So when social media first came out, everybody thought that they could use it to sell their product. And what they discovered is it's not any good for selling products. What it is good for is developing a circle of friends, is developing at least the illusion that, uh, that you and the customers are all together, just like pals. Um, and so companies that do this well have pages on Facebook where they have millions of likes and people are liking them just like they like a friend. And then you get um, you know, these little conversations going and that helps to cement in the customer's mind the idea that this is a friend of theirs. When it was discovered that the Earth was not at the center of all of the orbits of the cosmos, uh, Galileo was thrown in a dungeon because religious critics said that this knocks humankind off of its throne at the center of the universe. 
And I think the what's happening in modern neuroscience as we discover the all the things that are happening that we're not aware of is it sort of knocks us from the center of our own universe. We're no longer the ones in charge of all our behavior as we intuit we are. Um, but I think that these sort of dethronements, these getting knocked from the thrones, usually has uh, an upside in that it opens our eyes to a bigger picture. And so with the cosmos, we've come to understand how small we are in the big picture. And that's led to all sorts of new discoveries about the cosmos that we might not have made when we believed we were at the center. Same with brain science. Once we really get straight about how much control we do or don't have over our own uh, actions and behaviors, it opens up the capacity to explore new sorts of questions and see how we can help people, for example, overcome addictions and have better ways of, uh, of dealing with their different voices on the inside. The main thing that's happening in neuroscience now is uh, about understanding how to extend human capacities. So it turns out you can feed in all kinds of information into the brain, and the brain will figure out what to do with it. So um, even though we think of about things like eyes and ears and mouth and nose, we think about these as being standard uh, sensory organs. In fact, there's nothing special about them. You can replace these with other sorts of organs. And as long as you feed information into the brain, it will figure out what to do with it. So one of the projects we're doing in my laboratory is building a vest that people can wear under their clothing that turns sound into patterns of vibration on the body. And this is going to cure deafness because if somebody's deaf and their auditory system is broken, this is a way that they can take in sound through an unusual sensory channel into the brain. And the good news is that the brain will just figure out what to do with it.